Hey coach, so glad you found us on YouTube. Let me help you through this great journey. I have done it. I've won lots of championships, run one of the best programs in the country. Coach NBA guys, I can help you become a better basketball coach. Um, Teachhoops.com, I started it for the sole purpose of coaches like you. Let me help you. One-on-one -on -one calls, office hours, videos with me, you name it, we got it. Uh, I am here to help. I don't, there's no other place you're going to get the coach's personal email address. I want to be your Yoda. I want to be your mentor. Let me help you through this great journey we call coaching. All right. Enjoy, coach. All right. Welcome to Coach Unplugged. Uh, geez, I don't even know where you're going to fall, coach. You're going to be in like the late 600s, I think. I can't believe I've done. When I get to 1,000, that might be. I, we were just talking about you maybe hanging up your boots at some point. I think maybe when I get to a thousand, that might be the time for me to <laughs> stop talking, to be honest with you. Um, so Jason, what I'm going to have you do is um, I'm going to have you kind of what I would like we were talking about before we came on, very conversational. Um, I'm going to have you introduce yourself and I'm going to have you tell the listeners about your basketball journey, um, not only about your playing one, but about what you've done for, for Ireland basketball and all of that. And then... Um, We'll go down. That's like I said, we're very conversational. I've, I've, I have tons of questions, but uh, we'll just see which road we go down. So, why don't you introduce yourself to the the audience, and then we'll go from there. Sounds good. Uh, so, my name is Jason Killeen, and I'm originally from Limerick City, Ireland. Currently living in Dublin, Ireland, but uh, there's about a 15 or 16 year gap in the middle between leaving, uh, leaving Limerick. I spent nine years in America between high school and college. I uh, went on to play professional basketball. I've been playing professionally now since 2009, and that kind of goes back and forth between professional and, and semi-pro. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, playing basketball alongside having a job for and continuing on my education for a lot of them years as well. And, and what, uh, and explain how that system works. Like, how do you, you, you play professionally, but then you get, you have like a side job or you're going to school the, whole, the entire time? Yeah, a little bit of both. So I left, I graduated from Augusta State in Georgia in 2009. And I left and went and played pro for a couple of years, just full time. Played two years in France, played in Malaysia, played in England, and then came back to Ireland. Uh, went off and played in France again for a year. So basically the last six years I've been living in Dublin, Ireland. I got a job with Basketball Ireland, which is the governing body of basketball here, 2014 to 2019. Okay. So, you know, you're, you're working a full-time job. My first two years with Basketball Ireland were pretty crazy, actually. I came back, my wife and I came back from France, Got the job there. I was a uh, head of development, so I ran all the development programs for the for the island of Ireland. Uh, alongside that, played full time with a local club here at Temple Oak. Uh, did a master's degree at the same time. I coached two teams, two underage teams, under fifteen boys and under fifteen girls with Temple Oak Club. Uh, was the assistant coach on the under sixteen. Uh, men's national team that played in the European Championships. I was the head coach for the under 18 three on three team that went and played in the European Championships. So, you know, it's one of, you're trying to balance everything, but you're still leaving the house at eight o'clock in the morning and you're, and you're arriving back after 11 most nights. So right, it's right. a fairly full schedule, but <laughs> it's a full schedule. But when you, when you get to spend that amount of hours in the day, you know, based around basketball, it's, it's a you, good you gig. You forget sometimes. Yeah, you forget the hours that you put in, you know. Well, yeah, that's what I always tell my students, too. It's like I said, find something you love and that you love to do. And it helps when you're good at it. But, yeah, those, 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 those intersections. So explain professional basket, European professional basketball to our listeners, first of all. I have a bunch of questions, but let's do that first. So explain the European model to me. Like, so you – what did that entail when you went to France and played? Yeah, so the European model, if you like me asking you, you know, what's basketball in America? And you look at, you know, high school, some states have shot clocks, some, sh some states don't have shot clocks. Yeah. It, it, it varies a lot from country to country, you know. Okay. Uh, that's a great analogy. I don't think I've had anybody explain it that way, but that's a great way. We, I was just talking to a high school coach last night. That's a great way to explain it. So each country kind of runs their 
their professional because kids in high in the states play high school then they go to college and then they can go play in the g league or then go to europe and then or they play in the nba those that's basically it like there's no gray area there's semi-pros but there really isn't semi-pro um yeah yeah you're you're you're, opening up you're opening up a can of worms there because it, it varies so much like when you look at france you have the top league uh pro a and you know there's guys there they're making big money right then you then you have seven eight different professional leagues underneath that that are all structured the whole way down uh, national leagues down to regional leagues and there's there's a little bit for everybody the big differences in europe between the top leagues and the lower leagues would be in the top leagues there's no limit on on americans essentially you know when we say americans we anyone outside anyone that was educated or born outside of europe in ireland would be a category two player okay so the way it works the way it works in ireland is you're allowed two category two players on the score sheet during okay. the game okay but you can only have one on the court at any one time so which is strange right they brought right. that rule in a couple of years ago to try and uh promote the irish players and try increase the development of the irish players now me personally i think we've come far enough that we can we can start reintroducing two americans on the floor at any one time uh other leagues it's different rules everywhere you know you go to the bbl in england i think it's four americans you can have or four category two spain is different so as far as if you're a young american player and you're looking to go to europe you know it is very important to look at what league you're going to what kind of chance like so we've had two americans on our team for the last three or four years and they've never got to play together you know you have two guys on a team right. potentially do they, do they know, tend to do they tend to look for a type of player they look for a big do they look for a slasher do they look for a i mean are they trying to fill gaps that they don't feel like the irish players can fill is that what they're doing they yeah certainly fill, certainly fill gaps a big part of it would be we don't we don't produce a lot of big players you know, we're we're a small population, right. about four million, about four million, and I'd say basketball in Ireland is sixth or seventh most popular sport. So you have all these different sports, right. which is crazy. But which is. you know, if there was if there was any country in the world that was built for basketball, it's Ireland because you get to play inside and it rains so much over here. Right. <laughs> but uh, so a lot of teams will they, they look for bigs. A lot of teams will look for bigs. Now okay. we're lucky in Temple Oak in the fact that they almost look at me as being an import player because I was educated and played in the States for so long. I'm six foot 10 and I'm born in Ireland. So I, I kind of cross off that. So for our team, we can kind of look for the best player. A lot of times we look for like a stretch four and a point guard. That's what we've had the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, That's what I was thinking. The game games. is really the game has really changed. How do you how, how what have you, what changes have you seen in the game in the European game in the last like since you've started playing? Oh, it's massive. Like I did my master's degree on sports performance analysis, and so my thesis at the end I wrote it on rule change in basketball and how that's how that's changed the way we play. Right. You know. So obviously you have the obviously you have the Steph Curry effect where you know you walk in a gym in Ireland now. 5,000 miles away and there's kids yelling out Steph as they're shooting from the halfway line, you know, and right, you're, you're, right. you're, you're begging them to get close up to the basket and start right. out. But uh, there has, yeah, there's been huge changes. And I think that's, you know, basketball has always been one of them sports. I believe that's willing to embrace change and willing to try new things. You know, you don't see that same flexibility with football or soccer yeah. or many of the other sports. Like, you look at the 24 second shot clock, you know, that was under FIBA, that was 30 seconds. Then you put it down to 24. You look at getting the ball over the halfway line from eight sec, from 10 seconds down to eight seconds. Right. You look at the no charge circle, you know, offensive rebound, you have 14 second shot clock rather than resetting it back to 24. You know, right. all of these, all of these rules, essentially they're all for the fan. They're all to make the game more exciting, to score higher numbers. Uh, to protect the offensive players a lot more. Like that charge circle did a good job of doing that. And now you have the the zero step starting to come in as well. So it, it's a conscious effort by FIBA, I believe, to to speed up the game and, you know, you make it more fan-friendly, essentially. 
Right. Oh, I agree. So w- when you started, w- what were the skill sets that you, when you came in and started working for uh, um, the youth program, what do they call it? Basketball Ireland? What do they call it? Basketball Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause we, our, ours is USA basketball. Um, anyway, uh, which is, it's getting, is slowly getting to where it needs to get to. I mean, Don Showalter's in a great job, but um, anyway, uh, so what skill sets did you come in and feel like, like Ireland needed to work on? What was your job? Explain your job when you came in and started doing that. Yeah, so no, I've I've left Basketball Ireland since I work at a college here in Dublin. Okay. But when I when I first came in, like one of the big issues you have over here, and this is going to seem completely foreign or completely crazy to any coaches listening in the states, uh, I would have taken that under fifteen team club team, right? Now they're playing for me. They get to practice twice a week and again, you know. In America, you're, when I went to high school, all of a sudden now you're, you're practicing every single day for three or four hours a day. And just right. like that contact time is huge. The right. other downside, some of them better players. So I had kids, my, I had five international players on my team. So we started out and then five players that have represented our country and gone on five or six and went on to play in, in the European Championships, which is the, it's, it's the big deal over here, you know? Right. Uh, some of them better players, like I'm thinking of my point guard in particular, Chris, he would have played on my team. He would have played a year up. He would have played with his school. He would have played a year up in his school. He would have played with the national team. That kid played at any one time on six or seven different teams. And now that's six or seven different coaches. Right. Six or seven, six or seven different sets of six or seven different playbooks, six or seven different sets of terminology that he has to listen to and then and you know a lot of time they're they're running into practice and they're just got off the bus and they're running into practice from another practice so it's that's the right. big issue when I first came here I was like you know we need to do something about this I don't think we can change the structure in the sense that you know if you give a kid an opportunity to play for his country he's going to go play for his country you know and, right. and, and so he should but our idea was, and along with uh, with Tim Rice, who I believe you've had on the show yeah. before. Yeah. Tim's, Tim's great. Uh, Tim's done fantastic work over here in Ireland. Uh, we developed what was called the Green Shoots Coaching Manual. Okay. So we have three, we have three manuals, the green, the white, and the orange. Uh, the green one is aimed at kids from 7 to 10. And then you have the white is 10 to 12, and the orange is 12 to 14, right? So the whole idea was that we build seven to ten the first one we're trying to build athletes we're not basketball specific we're trying to build athletes we're trying to teach them you know how to run properly how to jump right. properly hand to eye coordination well that i think that's things. a lost thing in the states too oh huge, it's like huge. You know, ask a kid to like have their arms go and skip even at the younger ages like alternate it's like they got to get their bodies down I, I i i always say they're like newborn giraffes you know absolutely <laughs> when they're born Absolutely. and they're all like they can't control their bodies at that point yeah, yeah we're worried about them dribbling shoot we got to worry about them running you know <laughs> yeah and and you know it's all part of the development like do, do right. we need them being perfect athletes right away yeah. no you know these kids they should be giraffes they should be able to yeah. run around at that age and make mistakes and learn from the mistakes you know right uh so the whole idea of that the first book was build athletes right and the whole idea of that was that other sports picked up on that manual. So right. it, was a sne- it was a sneaky way for us. Like the GA in Ireland is hurling and football. You probably never heard of that. They're two sports that are native to Ireland. They're the biggest No, I have heard there. of them because I've done a oh, yeah. bunch of Oh, I have. <laughs> Very good. They're, they're, they're crazy cool. Like yeah. from, from like, yeah, anyway. They should Completely be playing them. Sport, they should be playing right. them on ESPN in the States right now. Like they should yes. be playing like the whole season. People would get into it. I'm telling you. But yeah. Yeah. So, it's weird that soccer is not the biggest sport in Ireland, too. That's just weird to me. That comes in after the GA now. Uh, there are native sports, so, you know. Yeah. And it's – if you're born in a, in a certain county – I say counties in Ireland because, you know, it's, it's different from states in America, obviously. Yeah. Ireland, for reference terms, is about the same size as West Virginia. So that's – Oh, don't – yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my – I've got I, – I can trace – my last name is Collins. I can trace the Collinses back to Ireland. Um, and, uh, my mom's maiden name is Mary Margaret McCormick. So I think McCormick's a pretty Irish name, 
Um, yeah. yeah. So it's like I can trace all of them back, but it's yeah, it's like I can tell. I don't remember what county they were born in, but it's weird because you think county is different in the states than it is. It's almost like yeah, a, it's, it's almost like a state in Ireland, right? It's almost like a subsection. Yeah, on, yeah. on a smaller scale. Yeah. yeah. So, but the point is that if with the GA and with the, their amateur games, right? So that nobody gets paid. Now they're obviously helped to get jobs and expenses and stuff. But amateur games, when you look at the finals in September, there's 80, 90,000 people at a game, you know, and right. they're all amateurs on the pitch, which is, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, if you're born in a county, you don't go play with any other county. You know, if you're, wherever you're born, you stay with them for good. And whatever their colors are, that's the colors that you represent. So it's hard to break into that. It's hard to break into the whole community aspect of it. Right. So with basketball, our goal was to not compete with the GA and not try you know, take kids away from other sports, our goal was to add to it. Right. So if we develop this, we develop these green shoots, now the GA and rugby and football, they're all taking these manuals and our reach has increased hugely because now you have, you know, thousands of kids across the board in multiple different sports, all learning the same hand-eye coordination and learning the same ways to be, to become athletes. Uh, our whole thing was we don't want kids at six and seven and eight years old to just play basketball. We right. want them to go play soccer. We want them to go play GA. We want them to try tennis, play as many different sports as you can. You're always going to lose a few when you right. do that, but you'll also gain a few. Yeah. You know, the dropout rate for, for females really is 14, 15 to, uh, to tend to drop out of sports for males comes a little bit later than that. But so we believe that at a young age, if you make these games and these drills as fun as possible, you give kids a chance, an opportunity to try as many different sports as possible. Then when it comes to that, that age, they're more likely to stay involved. Right. Right. And so the second, yeah, the second book, that was the first one. The second one, you know, you're getting into more basketball specific elements. And then the third one, more and more basketball specific. And then it leads right into our national teams. And so what our national manual is it? Is it telling the coaches what to specifically do, like drill wise? Is it talking about um, just philosophy? Is it talking about nutrition? Is it talking how how specific can you get, like with what's in there for the building block? Every everything that you just said. So this okay. is the picture of yep. the book here. It's it's free to download on the Basketball Ireland website. Okay. You know, you've tons of games in here. You've tons of philosophy. I'll give an example of one game. So with uh, young kids, so dribble tag, right? Okay. So I have the ball. There's 30 kids in the, on the court. You got five or six kids, the ball. They got a dribble. They got a chest show. If they tag you, you're it. They're free, right? right? So very easy. The twist that we put in there is you put in like a saw, like a volleyball or something that's a tennis ball, the older they get. Yeah. And that now becomes a safety ball. So now you have 30 kids, you have six kids that are, that are it, and you have two or three safety balls. So if you have that safety ball in your hand, you can't get caught, right? You're, you're right. Dan or what, I'm not sure right. the term in America. Uh, the idea is now I'm chasing you, trying to catch you. Somebody throws that softball over the top, you've got to catch it. And now, now I can't catch you. So what it works like on, yeah, so it's just, it's really simple, right? So right. if I don't make a good throw, you get caught. If you don't make a good catch, you get caught. It teaches kids you're running and you hear them seven, eight years old and they're screaming at each other, running around the court. You know, that's right. one of the most difficult things to do is to get kids to talk when they're playing. But if you give that to them at a young age, you know, it right. helps hand-eye coordination, passing, dribbling, communication. Well, and just, I think I always talk about fundamentals. Like at that age, you got to make it fun. Like it's absolutely. Fun fundamentals. You know, you got to you got to do all of that. Um, it's the biggest key that we have in the book, teaching fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. capital F U N. So yeah, <laughs> it's exactly true? what you're saying. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, I think that's that's exactly the way you got to tackle it. So, is there any is so this that takes them up to the national team. Um, how does it, they explain how the national teams work? Like, how do I get on the national team? How do you find me? How do I, how does that work? Yeah. So it's all being restructured now. I'll just, I'll just finish off that last talk before I get, before I get lost again. Okay. Uh, the whole idea, going back to, to my point guard, Chris. So on his, on his six or seven different teams, 
the whole idea with the green shoots now is that even though he's playing on six or seven different teams, every coach is using the same terminology. Every coach is using the same style of play. Okay. Every coach is using the same, you know. So now he's playing for six different teams, but what he's hearing is the same thing no matter what right. coach he goes to, no matter right. what court. Uh, the style of play we try to go with is it is guard oriented because we don't produce a lot of bigs. Because <laughs> you're on uh, Ireland. Because people are yeah. short in Ireland. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a lot of run and gun. Right. You know, it's a lot of get the ball up the floor as quickly as possible. But on the flip side of that, when we do have big kids, we give them them skills as well. There's no such thing right. anymore of being stuck under the basket. It's, you know, you, you got you to gotta learn all the positions. Well, and you I'm, give in, them the I'm in Wisconsin. I'm in Wisconsin where the Bucks are, Milwaukee Bucks are. You want to be Giannis. You want to be one of the Absolutely. best players. And I mean, think about him. Like, he's a guard in a 6'11 body that's like, he's just Insane. not a normal human being. You know, he's like LeBron. <laughs> yeah, he's a household name all over the, the world. The you know, Greek just, freak is what we refer to him. Yes, yeah. yes, he's not exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and his all his brothers yeah. the same way too. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, so okay, so then, so then, what happens when they play for the? Are there different levels of the national team, or is there one national team for each age level? Uh, each age, one for each age level. But the way it worked, the way it used to work, they've changed it now. We have basketball Ireland have an academy structure put in. So again. Uh, the best players from each region. So you have like Dublin, you know, it was half, 50% of the population in Ireland lives in Dublin. So right. Dublin is obviously, it's, it's a Mecca. It's a home for, for sports in general, but it certainly is for basketball. Uh, a kid in, in, you know, in a rural area, the whole idea is that they're getting the same opportunity now as the kid in Dublin, you know, uh, they're getting the same material, they're getting the same skills, the same drills. When it comes to the national team, the way it used to work was 30 kids were picked for the national team, and then over a two-year period, that's whittled down to 12. So every okay. every couple of months, you have you have some cuts. You know, they come together uh, probably one or two weekends of the month in a central location, and then it gets whittled down. And then by the time the European Championships come around, you have 12. You're you're down to 12 players. Well, so what what would you say to the coach? What what are you having your players do right now? What are, what are you, what are players in Ireland doing right now? Like well, everyone's sitting at home at the minute. But <laughs> I know. Is there is there abilities to get outside? I mean, there are a lot of outside hoops and stuff. Like I know our kids are trying to get on hoops. Like the, the biggest problem that we have here is court time. So there's just there's just not enough access for kids to to courts. Like. Our national basketball arena is not as good as a lot of high schools in America. Okay. You know, so okay. only in the last couple of years are people starting to buy the, you know, like the Dr. Dish and the shooting guns. And right. It, it's starting to move forward. But the biggest issue is court time. It's very difficult for a kid. If, some, if a kid and, and their friend wants to go shoot hoops, it's difficult to go do it. You it's can't even find like at, at, at the school. There isn't hoops at the school. Generally, it's it's very difficult to find. Wow. That's one of the biggest. Yeah, it's one of the biggest things. And that's again, when you're coaching over here, you know, there's no such thing as a wasted second or a wasted minute. You know, right. if you have, if you have, you know, you have three hours in a week with a team. So the last thing that I ever wanted to do was was to spend that time. Uh, putting in a playbook essentially, right? You know, there's no, you do skill there's no point in me having, yeah, yeah, it's all skill, it's skill and reaction, you know, read and react, right? Trying to empower the kids as much as you possibly can to actually play the game of basketball. Like, I tell my team, very first session every, t every year when I get a new team, the very first thing I say to them is, Listen, guys, I want to coach you in practice, I want you to get better, but when it comes to the game, I want to sit and watch. Right. I want to sit. I want to enjoy watching you guys play. I want to enjoy watching you guys figure it out. You know, and we always talk about uh, finding weaknesses on the other team and exploiting that and, and trying to get them on the same page constantly to do that. You know, it's obviously challenging. It's not something that's going to be picked up right away. Right. But there is a great sense of satisfaction at the end of the season when when you when you start to see that. Well, what I think is you what I think is unique is like 
this is what I think makes the U.S. unique in the sense of basketball is it's like foot, American football is a lot harder to practice. All you need to be a, become – you need a ball and a basket, like literally, Absolutely. like, and then a friend. And you don't even need, you don't even need the basket. No. <laughs> you know, you can go outside with the ball and you can get better. Right. You know? Oh, yeah. That, and so that's what that, – that was what I, the point I was trying to get to right now is with – with everyone in the world seems to be shut down. I tell, I'm telling my players, this is the selfish time right now. Huh. Oh, absolutely. You know, this is the time you can work on your ball handling. You got a ball, go outside, like go find a empty area and go work on your ball handling, you know, work on your, you know, find a hoop. Like there's lots of hoops in the U S like, you can't go more than six feet and see a basketball hoop. That's um, it. Uh, that's and Basketball Ireland have done a really good job during this quarantine with encouraging kids to do that. So every night now, for anyone that wants to follow on Twitter, I think at B-Ball Ireland or at B-Ball IRL, uh, they're, they're doing coaching clinics every single night. They are. I saw Tim's going to be on one. I think it was today. Yeah, tonight. Yeah, tonight, yeah. yeah. So they're doing that. Uh, we have a lot of players. You know, as, as you know yourself, the basketball world is very small, right? It is. <laughs> oh man the amount of people that like i've been well i've been warming up to play a game in malaysia and i look down the other end of the court and i'm like hey <laughs> like you know someone right. that right you might have played in college or someone right that, and it's 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 really fun like that i really enjoy when that happens but we have a lot of americans that live in ireland now right they would have came over 10 right. 20 30 years ago to play a professional in ireland you know fell in love got married had kids and now they're now they're settled in ireland Right. So, so, and we have one of my teammates, uh, Lauren Summers, Puff Summers, he goes by, went to Davison. Uh, he is a personal trainer over here on okay. Why Not Me. Why Not Me is an envious company. And he's like, the kids love him, man. The kids, he puts up drills every single day. And, it's and all, where does he, so, so where does he do that training? Like, where, how does he make that work? Anywhere. Like, he, well, he has a gym that he goes to every morning. Okay. But right now, if you click on his thing, like I said, why not me? He's doing workouts in the shed. You know, right. you have the law, you have the lawnmower hanging on the wall behind <laughs> you. Have, right. And, and, he's, and he's working, you know. Right. And then you see when you look at these stories and stuff on social media, the amount of kids and young athletes that are following these workouts. And, you know, it can only help. Like it can only make us better. But we are lucky that it's becoming a bit of a melting pot. You know, in Europe now, we have freedom of travel. Uh, kind of like Europe is essentially like the States. Now, if you want to drive from, you know, from one state to the other, you can do that. So right. Europe, is, Europe is like that now. Once you're in, you're in and you can move around. Right. So we have the number one population in Ireland is Irish people, right? The second right. Is, po is Polish. And then you have lots of Lithuanians. You have lots of Eastern Europeans. So they're... Lots of Spanish, lots of French. It's Dublin is a is a international city. You know, right. there's there's cultures. You walk down the street, you'll hear 10, 15 different languages, languages. in the space yeah. of twenty minutes. That's awesome. Walking down That's the awesome. Street. Yeah, and they're bringing that. You know, and uh, people that would have come over to work just say from Lithuania, they're staying now, and now their kids are coming up. So we have. We have a lot of kids that are representing Ireland, playing for Ireland, and there's a big, long Lithuanian name on the back of their jersey, you know, right. which is pretty cool. So, right. And then you have the people that are coming from America and coming from the other direction, and it's just becoming this melting pot of different ideas and different coaches, and it, it's an exciting time to be a part of it. It is. It is. So um, any parting words for coaches that are listening, Coach? I appreciate you taking time out, out of your day. I do, really do. Oh, uh, the biggest thing, I think, like you, you, you touched on it earlier, make it fun. You know, we're talking about young kids now. Make it fun. Make it as enjoyable as they possibly can. Encourage them to do different things. You know, you see a lot of kids, uh, if you're just playing basketball from seven years old, you know, you're, you're, mo you're moving in the same patterns constantly. You're, you're, you're putting pressure on the same joints constantly. I think the more that young kids do, 
the stronger their bodies become and you know eventually the better at basketball they're going to what be did you did, what other sports did you play because you're a big body what other sports did you play when you were growing yeah, up i played soccer hurling gaelic football rugby handball anything that we could get our hands and on i think the around. bigger bodies have a harder time with it in some respects. oh absolutely yeah oh it's not yeah it's 100 it's <laughs> percent. i was awkward till i was about 15 or 16 you know right right no but i think it's just i think it's the pounding all all the big players that i've coached it's like that's why you don't want them to play one sport um because you're right it's those same movements in the joints and the legs and all that can't that's play as many yeah play as many sports as you can well thank yeah, you coach. I, I really appreciate you coming on be safe okay Thank you very much, yep. Coach. God bless. Bye. Bye, bye. Hey, Coach. So glad you enjoyed that video. Not that you found us. You already found us. Let me know how I can help. Um, I've won lots of championships, as you can see. Won lots of rings. Uh, let me know how I can help you become a better basketball coach. Teachoops.com is one small way. Go over and check it out above and below. And let me know how we can serve you become to become a better basketball coach. Enjoy. Enjoy.